Hi, my name is Genoine Perez. I am a woman of Mexican descent and I live in Narn, Melbourne, and I am the curator and an artist in the exhibition Yarn for Hands. Yarn for Hands is a group of Latin American artists working with textiles. The focus of this exhibition is to create a tribe, um, a tribe of powerful women that have deep connections to cultural heritage, that have been practicing textiles for a very long time, but have never worked together. My name is Isabel Avendaño Hasbun. I'm Colombian. Um, I'm a textile artist and a woodworker living in Melbourne. I said yes to the project because I think, you know, the idea of having a group of Latin American women um, exhibiting collectively in the same space. It's incredible, like I've never seen an exhibition in Australia about Latin American women and their experience as immigrants in this country. Most of my practice has been about um, feelings of isolation, a deep sense of belonging, my experience as a migrant to this country, but what does that mean in terms of my cultural heritage? So I really got deep into those you know, emotions and into what that represents and means for me as an individual, but also, you know, as part of a crea creative um, um, ecosystem in, in Victoria. I have connected a lot with the Latin American community. And through these connections, I've met five incredible women. Carmen Novoa, who is an Uruguayan visual artist and textile maker. She's 81 years old. We just immediately connected. The way she embodies cultural practice is through you know music through community through sharing of food sharing of knowledge how much she has contributed to the cultural landscape and the representation of latin american communities and artists in this city so i thought definitely i would love to work with her and the rest of the group came like that one of the really uh, incredible things about textile practice is that it, it definitely is a practice that requires a lot of time, a lot of consideration. And so the idea of this slow uh, time practice versus fast fashion comes as a response to the ridiculous amount of wastage um, in, in the fashion industry. In my textile practice, I always use recycled um, materials and I try to use like really different things. For example, you know, I have a work that's made out of yoga mats, um, another one that's made out of tire inner tubes. The one way that designers can actually deal with waste is, you know, by using it, by using, you know, trash or discarded materials and make something through manipulating the, the material, creating something new or giving it a new life. I want to talk about Paula Do Prado, who is a woman from Uruguay. Her practice is crochet. The material actually dictates where she goes, um, integrating natural fibers, synthetic fibers, really connecting to deep emotions about what the work is trying to express um, through you know, the materiality of it. Another incredible artist in this group is Viviana Arango. She's from Colombia. She uses a lot of uh, discarded material, organic material. For example, um, she will be using avocado shells to create color, integrating some flowers from the local area and just building a story about, you know, the two different worlds in which she converges um, as a Colombian migrant, but also as a person living in Victoria. Receiving the City of Melbourne Arts Grant has allowed me, as a curator, to invite this artist to create a new piece of work that um, represents some of those incredible dialogues and creative exchanges that we've been having for the past 18 months. Um, without it, we wouldn't be able to, you know, afford the gallery space, come together and be paid as artists. Um, so for me, it's, it's an incredible gift um, to be given and a huge responsibility because we are not only representing our communities but we are actually representing hundreds of artists um, from different diasporas so it's it's a true gift